Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Today, we're focusing on the town of Norman Wells and the Northwest Territories, a community facing significant strain due to a critical supply issue. This year, Norman Wells and the surrounding area won't receive their essential barge deliveries due to unusually low levels of water on the Mackenzie River. Now, in May, the territorial government announced that the Marine Transportation Service would be canceling these crucial barge routes. The Department of Infrastructure reported that the Mackenzie River near Port Providence is currently non-navigable, citing obstacles like large boulders and gravel bars in key areas, making it unsafe for barge passage. This cancellation is not just a logistical issue, but it's a profound disruption for the region. The Fuel Service Division will now have to wait until winter to deliver fuel to the area via the Winter Road. And Imperial Oil, which supplies fuel in Norman Wells, has been notified of this situation. Local and territorial representatives have been raising concerns about the possibility of this for some time. And now the repercussions of this decision are set to impact the community and surrounding area significantly. Now, in today's episode, we speak with Norman Wells Mayor Frank Pope about the implications of this canceled barge deliveries. We'll explore what this means for the community, the region, and the overall viability of life in the northern west part of Northwest Territories. So stay tuned as we uncover the real-life impacts of this logistical challenge and what the mayor is doing to raise this not only with territorial but nationally with the Prime Minister and Federal Ministers as well. This is Municipal Affairs. Mayor Pope, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. I want to start by getting an overview of the reason why you're here. Uh, the, last week at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention, you spoke in front of a room of your fellow colleagues from Western and the territorial uh, municipalities in Canada, talking about the dire situation that Norman Wells is currently under with the barges not being able to reach your community. Can you elaborate on what you were talking about at FCM? I certainly can. Uh, just one thing, I'm not only talking on behalf of the town of Norman Wells. We sit in the Sato region of the Northwest Territories. Uh, five communities, Norman Wells plus four indigenous communities, Toledo, Delany, Coval Lake, and Fort Good Hope. So when we we're talking, we we're talking on behalf of all five communities, not just Norman Wells. The problem we have here is that um, we have lost our access on our main transportation link, the Mackenzie River. Due to droughts in Alberta and BC over the last couple of years, the river is, well, as of last fall, September, was no longer navigable. Our fuel supplies were not all delivered. Our merchandise for the stores were not all delivered. Uh, housing, building materials, all the stuff that was sitting on the dock in the Hay River stayed on the dock in Hay River, and a lot of it was flown in at great expense. A lot of it was shipped by Winter Road on the first week in February. It's a Winter Road, which is on frozen snow on tundra, and that normally lasts about four to six weeks. This past winter, we were fortunate. The winter stayed cold. So we were able to get a lot of the merchandise in, especially heating fuel, to most of our communities. Uh, and that uh, thing is, uh, that was last fall. So lo and behold, this spring, we are told by government, sorry, there will be no barge service this summer either because the navigable waters are just not there. The Coast Guard will not be able to go through the river and navigate to the boys, safety boys. So that's cancelled. What has happened is one airline, for those of you who may remember ICE, ICE pilots, the Northwest Territories, Buffalo Airways, they have bought themselves a Boeing 737 and have stepped up to the plate offering reduced freight costs from what they would normally cost from Yellowknife to Norman Wells at 60 cents a pound. That's on top of the 50 cents a pound average to ship by truck from Edmonton to 
yellow knife. So uh, freight costs are roughly, well, they are, but they're about half the price of a commodity in the stores here. So if the freight rates up of 275%, 250%, all that extra cost of getting the material here, getting groceries here, is borne by the end user, the consumer. We are trying to find a way to have some of these costs picked up by either territorial government, federal government, or both. We're not. We're having some success. I think the Northwest Territory government. They're going. They're talking to us. We have tried for the three months to talk to the minister of uh, communities and infrastructure, Minister Fraser. Uh, I tried to meet up with him in Calgary last week. I did meet with one of his staff, and through that meeting, I have invited Mr. Fraser, Minister Fraser, to come into our community to meet with representatives of all five of our communities to understand our situation firsthand. Don't just wait for somebody to write you a letter and make you a phone call. Get your ass in here and take a look at it firsthand and understand where we are. Now, that's so, basically where we are right now. Okay, so paint me a picture then, because that seems like you're uh, Norman Wells and the surrounding five communities that you represent right now are in a dire situation. You're talking about goods that are needed for day-to-day -day lives. You're talking about fuel to get people around. Is it bad? Like, is there a point where you are like concerned that if you do not get the barges or get some services and or some supplies into your community, you could be potentially in a more dire situation than you are right now? Yes, I think what the, the biggest problem, we, we, we worked with all the local businesses and we figured out what their losses have been because of this last fall. And that in the Satu region is in the area of $14 million in lost business. That is because material did not come in, so they're not unable to fulfill contract law obligations. And because of the high cost of living in our community, we're having a hard time to bring tradespersons in to work on what is available to be done. Uh, we have people here waiting for homes to come in, whether they're mobile homes or uh, uh, lumber construction. Um, we are in the stage where we believe that the Winter Road did get enough heating fuel into all their communities. And Peter Loyal, who look after the heating fuel for Norman Wells, are doing a survey right now. We're checking all their figures and facts and as, uh, estimated usage before the next winter road comes in. And we will know from them fairly soon if we are in a dire straits or whether we should be successful to get through till next February. So we're doing a lot of work internally. Uh, we're working with our business community. They're coming up with the issues that they've run into because of the high cost of uh, freight. Uh, as I said, some of them have lost business opportunities, some have lost contracts. And where next fear is, that because of the cost of living, we may be losing some of our residents. People say, look, I, we can't afford to live here anymore. Uh, let's go down to Edmonton where we can go to Safeway and uh, buy groceries affordably. Because I know the cost here, uh, when you're a pensioner, single income family, uh, an elder, a widow, those costs are just insurmountable. During COVID, the town of Norman Wells established what we call the kitchen cupboard, where people could bring in groceries that they didn't need in their home and take something out the cupboard that they could use. Well, that is now a full-fledged food bank. We are now servicing as many as 35 families here. A lot of them are single income families. They're working, but they just can't afford the, the cost coming off of a single income paycheck or of a pension check. Um, in my case, I just as an example, last winter, my heating fuel was $8,900 for the winter. I'm paying two seventy six dollars for a liter of gasoline at the pump. So there's some of the costs that we're trying to absorb and live with and still retain our community as a great place to live. Very difficult when your cost of living is this atrocious.
Okay, so I just want to just clarify something for a second because you said a liter of gas at Norman Wells right now is two dollars and seventy six cents, right? That is correct. Okay, what was it prior to last fall? Was it lower? Was it relatively the same? Give me an example of how much this is, how much this sort of change in not being able to get supplies to Norman Wells and the surrounding communities has affected because. Everyone else is seeing their gas prices go up. So people might be looking at you right now, Mayor, and going, okay, everyone's prices are going up. How dramatically have they gone up? 10, 15, 20%? Uh, I'm just trying to think back a year and a half, maybe, when it would have been about 205, 210 a liter. So it's going up roughly 70 cents a liter over a year and a half. Okay. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, um, I want to ask the stupid question right now, and I do apologize if I if it comes out stupid. What's the at What's the atmosphere like from your residents right now? Because you were sounding the alarm. You're trying to work and trying to get meetings with ministers, trying to get meetings with the territorial and the federal government. But is there a sense in the community that they're not being heard, even by you? Like when you're trying to reach out to local officials or territorial and federal officials. Norman Wells isn't on the map for these governments. We are keeping our community completely up to date with what we are doing as a council. We are giving updates on things that we are doing, who we're talking to. We told them we wrote a letter to the prime minister with all the information that I've been providing as far as the business community. Uh, we have been keeping them fully appraised of what we're hoping to do next. Uh, I think because Buffalo at least stepped up to the plate. Somebody came forward and said, can we help? And I think the community really appreciated that. And I think that, I think my feeling on the pulse of the community is, you guys are doing a decent job. You'll have to do better. So I, I think the community right now is on is in our corner and uh, we are trying to do more. Every time we do something, we have another meeting with people. Uh, we're going to give them an update on the FCM meetings when uh, our next council meeting. Um, I think the pulse of the community is positive right now. But as you know, that could very quickly change if the costs keep going up. Okay, so let's talk about the advocacy work that you've been doing. You have called, you have written, you have tried to meet with the Prime Minister, you have tried to meet with the Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Community, Sean Frazier at FCM. You had that uh, conversation with his staff. Um, do you feel like you're being heard? And if not, why not? Do you, Why do you think that you're not being heard? I believe that the, the NWT government were going through they're a brand new government, only five, six months in office, new ministers. They have just been going through a rather dismal budget session where they're having to establish cuts. So we're waiting for them now. The session has ended. Just uh, yesterday, I believe, the session ended. Now we're hoping that we can get more traction meeting with some of the cabinet ministers and the premier. We are there now. But we, we went to Ottawa, the, the, the mayor of Tolita, which is about 100 miles south of here, and myself went to Ottawa, and we'd asked our member of parliament to set up some meetings with different people who, have, who might be able to listen to us. Our major issue at that time was the need for an all-season road. Uh, all this other stuff to do with the resupply and losing our boarding and losing our uh, barging is sort of double whammy to us. So we met, uh, when we were in Ottawa, we were unable to get very much traction with ministers. So we went and met with the senator for NWT, Ms. Um, Anderson. Uh, we also met with the, uh, the senator from Nunavut, who was a former uh, minister in the NWT government at that time before they went in, they divided. And they were very, very accommodating they gave us the use of their staff in the Senate while we were there to write a proposal to the Senate Committee on Transportation and Communication. Within two weeks of getting that written up and submitted, we were invited to come to Ottawa and make a present to presentation of that committee, which we did. We were very well received. 
I also did an interview on, as it happened, CBC. We had the people from the, the radio program, uh, ah, geez, I can't remember the name. Uh, they came in and met with us. They actually came into the community and did interviews and went back out. Sorry, The Current. That was the radio program, The Current. Uh, we've done major interviews with the Globe and Mail. We've done a lot of work with local media, Cabin Radio, Northwest Air, uh, the CBC North. They've done a lot of work for us, but that sort of stays in the North. Uh, we're going to continue to uh, talk to people like yourself to try and get our message out a little further because we, we, we don't feel people are taking this as seriously as it should be taken. Uh, we, we are at the stage where are we ready to declare a state of emergency? We have not done it yet, but we are very close to thinking about it. Why but not? We are, well, why, uh, ha we, why haven't you, why haven't you declared a local state of emergency? Because uh, I can imagine <laughs> if you do that, you're not only going to get federal support, but you're not even going to get you're not just going to get territorial support, but the federal government will look and say, "Oh, what's going on here?" And you might put it on the 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 larger radar than doing interviews. What has stopped you? Is it just the situation at hand and it's not as dire dire right now as it could be i'll give you a very simple explanation of that one covid we declared a state of emergency during covid and spent i'd say several hundred thousand dollars out of our own budget our operational funds to look after our community during covid we were told by government Keep your invoices, keep your bills, submit them, and we will reimburse you. That did not happen. We were not reimbursed one cent of what we spent on our community. None of our communities in the South too were. I don't believe any in the NWT were. I can't talk for them. I'm talking for myself at this point. So when you say, let's declare a state of emergency, the money will pour in, bullshit. That did not happen during COVID. So why would we expect it to happen this time? We are trying to do this as a community, trying to do things ourselves, trying to be very self-sufficient, working through it, and making sure that when we go to the federal government, we've got a business case as to why we need their support. We're, I think it maybe it's a little bit of small town pride, but we're working hard among ourselves with the business community, the politicians, and that's why we did not initially, or have not initially called in a state of emergency because we were screwed last time. What would, what can the, the, what can a Canadian do right now to help out the people in your area of the Northwest Territory, Commonwealth, and the five communities? Is there something that Canadians can do right now? We're going to talk about what the federal government can do in two seconds, but on the larger picture, because you talked about this needing to be more than just an issue that is up in the north. It needs to be on the radar of a lot of people. What can Canadians do to help out the people of Norman Wells and the surrounding area? Okay, let's go back again to COVID. Food Banks Canada were a big help to us. They sent in several pallets by air of chicken, which we were able to distribute over a period of a couple of months to our residents. It was beautiful, fresh chicken. Uh, we had one pallet, which was maybe we didn't really need at the time, but one of our neighboring communities were very short of food, so we sent them as a partners, one of our pallets of chicken to keep them happy. Um, we met in um, Calgary last week with the Egg Marketing Board and, and told them about our dire needs and where we might be able to get some help. And we've been told that they're going to work with us to maybe supply eggs for our food bank so we maybe get some eggs. Uh, we're working with other people regarding meat, chicken, poultry, to see if we can get some help that way to put it through the food bank so that the needy people are getting it first and foremost. If we have a surplus, we can spread it a little bit further. So we're trying to do all this stuff ourselves, working with other agents. I think where we really need help is um, people that lobby on our behalf. Uh, maybe people that say, geez, you guys, you're my member of parliament. Are you aware of this stuff? Um, you know, can you maybe step up to the plate and maybe raise it in Parliament or raise it with your Prime Minister? Uh, the same with our uh, MLAs and our uh, Cabinet Minister for the GNWT. 
can they do more to help us along the line? We're not going out begging. We're trying to do an awful lot by ourselves, but we do need, we get to that stage where we're hitting a brick wall and we need more help. And um, I, we've talked about subsidies. Uh, could we help through the government to subsidize, for example, Buffalo for their rate, maybe give them some money towards what they're doing on our behalf. And uh, maybe our merchants, the grocery stores in particular, maybe we could give something to them to help with it. And the merchants do get a subsidy from the uh, Nutrition North program, which is they add on, they, they deduct, but that's only for nutritious foods. But it does help a little bit to drop the cost on some commodities up here. So th that helps quite a bit. But overall, if we can find a way to overcome this high cost, uh, for example, let's say it's a 50 cents a pound on the barge and a dollar a pound on the, on the plane. Maybe a subsidy of 50 cents a pound would be very welcomed that we can get stuff in at least at barge rates. We don't want a free ride. We don't want it for nothing. We're still willing to pay our own way but bring it in as affordably as is possible. You, you talk about your local MP, uh, Michael McLeod, who's the MP for the Northwest Territories. Have While you haven't been able to speak directly to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, have you spoken with uh, uh, MP McLeod about this situation? And do you get an indication that he has brought it to either Northern uh, Minister Dan Vendel or even uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? Or are you sort of hoping to hear back from the uh, M local MP as well? No, no, we, we've been in touch with him. Uh, we've Everything we've written to uh, PM or wherever, we've copied him on everything. I sent him several texts. Uh, we were disappointed when we did go to Ottawa that he, well, I'm sorry, I wouldn't be disappointed, but he caught COVID when we were down there. So he was not available to, to knock on doors and help us. So uh, I don't hold that against him. If you're ill, you're ill. That's one thing. Uh, he has not really been uh, front and center calling us and seeing what he can do to help, but we are chasing him and keeping him fully appraised of our situation. I appreciate that. You, you talked about how uh, the Northwest Territory Legislature just wrapped for the session. Um, so that means that the cabinet ministers, that means that the premier of the territory is going to be crisscrossing the territory and meeting with mayors like yourself. What are you hoping to hear from uh, Premier uh, Simpson about this issue? What are you hoping to hear from the territorial government about what's going on and how they can help you? I'm hoping that when he comes in, he can meet with the business community. They're the people who are hurting next to the residents. Residents are hurting because of the cost of living. But our businesses are, are uh, suffering because they're unable to get on with work that they contracted to do because the material can't come in. I think there might be some way through some of the different um, agencies of government where they can help our business community uh, and um, whether it's to help them with their costs to help them with reduced uh, rates on loans. Um, they're the experts on this sort of stuff. So I think that the premier and some of his ministers meeting with the business community can work out what's best for them. And we can meet with other people regarding what's best for the residents of our community as the cost of living. And we are doing that to the best of our ability. And um, I'm hoping that the, the various ministers will come in and pay us a visit. I did hear that uh, Fraser, the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, was going to be coming north this summer. Uh, and we have invited him through his staff to stop. Yellowknife is not coming north. Norman Wells or Inuvik might be coming north. Uh, don't come up looking for photo ops. Come out here and roll up your sleeves and work with us to try and overcome some of our hardship. So what would you say to Prime Minister Trudeau right now? If he happened to pick up the phone today and called the mayor of Norman Wells, Frank Pope, what would you ask of him or what would you tell him about the situation? Charity starts at home. Quit spending so much money worldwide when we are suffering in the north, not only in the Northwest Territories, northern provinces, the Indian reserves who have no running water, that's my only thing for him. 
charity starts at home, start spending some of that money in the Canada where it's needed. The other countries who you're helping out so nicely can wait a little while because we need it first. That, that's about as simple a message as I would make to him. So while you're looking for the provincial, the territorial and the federal government to come to the table, you as the mayor of your community and you and your council as leaders of your community are dealing with this day to day. What steps are the municipality taking to alleviate some of the issues financially or even, uh, I don't want to say uh, substantial, uh, I don't want to say superficial, but what what ways is the municipality, Norman Wells and the surrounding area, doing to help the businesses who, with a $14 billion million dollar loss, you need to help your own community as well, as well as advocating. So what is the municipalities doing right now to ensure that this doesn't become a bigger financial catastrophe for your business community? Uh, I, I believe that we're having, we're going to be going through our budget, the, the town's own budget. And uh, we have some projects which are now delayed by a year because of the situation for freight. We may have money in our budget. We could get other work done in the meantime that we need to be done for the community, which can be done by local contracts and local businesses. We're not there yet. We're just discussing it in-house, but there may be some opportunities that we can come up with work that needs to be done that was not on our current radar. We've talked about we've talked about a lot of things over the last 15, 20 minutes. What's the one thing we haven't talked about that you want to make sure people understand if they listen to this or they watch this at a future date? Ready to rumble on that one, sir. <laughs> Diefen Baker, Prime Minister Diefen Baker, 1960s, called for the road to resources, an all-season road through the Mackenzie Valley from Fort Simpson to Inuvik. The center line of that highway was cut in 1972 and 73. To date, there is a road between Simpson and Wrigley. Uh, from Norman Wells South, there's like 20 kilometers of road has been built. And a recent estimate from the NWT government for completion of this all season road from Wrigley to Norman Wells is 2037. We need this highway tomorrow. Not five years from now, not 10 years from now, tomorrow. So one thing we have not been talking about is our, this whole situation that we're off with, we need an all-season road because we know, we in the North know global warming, climate change is devastating us. We know that that winter road may not be fit to travel next year or the year after if it's warm. We were very fortunate this last winter. Uh, we, we have had floods in Hay River, in the same places where there's no water now. Global warming is so unpredictable, we don't know what's coming next. It could be there'll be enough water in the river next spring for barges, but it's stuff that we cannot foretell. We can't foretell the future. But one thing we would be satisfied with is that we could accelerate the construction of the all-season road, at least from Wrigley to Norman Wells. Then from Norman Wells, we can support other four communities out of here because the highway would come through um, Tolita and Norman Wells. And then we would still have winter roads if, if available to the other communities. And remember, the, 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 the fuel that we have to haul up here on the winter roads also has to cross to Delany, Great Bear Lake one of the largest lakes in Canada, uh, one of the most tranquil areas on earth, and we're hauling diesel fuel across that ice. How long is that ice going to be safe to take loads of fuel across? The other thing I'll just throw in along the same line to do with fuel delivery. Um, the, the fuel comes in from Edmonton on the Northland Railway, comes in to enterprise. Up until the fire season last year, it came all the way into the Hay River, to the facility where they load the barges. Because of damage to the rail line, CN did repair the line to enterprise, 
but are refusing to repair the line between Enterprise and Hay River. I am estimating that maybe 30 kilometers of line and they're not going to do that. They don't see it being a good business case. So instead of getting the material uh, by barge coming to see and right into Hay River, they're now having to truck it all the way from Enterprise up the McKenzie uh, system, which is, as I said, frozen snow on tundra. So the ramification of what could go wrong is we don't want to have any disasters. We don't have any spills. So the whole thing is related to safety too on that road. Um, the government last year did a good job of icing the road and keeping it from deteriorating quickly. Uh, that cost them quite a bit of money. We hope that they continue along that line. Uh, I may be a little confusing on all this transportation no, stuff. No, this be, be, our... no, there's a question I want to ask though, because we talk about you're talking about climate change, which is a major issue right now for a lot of communities in Northern. We saw last year major wildfires that caused the evacuation of communities, not only in Northwest Territories, in Alberta, yeah. and even in BC. You don't have access to an all season road to get in and out of your community. You have very limited access or ways to move about most of your transportation i'm assuming is by air or by the ice roads during the winter what happens because if this is unusually dry season which we are in an unusually dry season what happens if there's a major climate emergency in your area are you prepared to evacuate on a moment's notice we talk about 2037 which seems like not that long, but it's a long time if something major happens in a community that is so remote from access to equitable transportation. You're right. When they had the fires in Katlidichi, uh, Fort Smith, Hay River, and Yellowknife, they did have a road to get out. Dangerous it might have been, but they were able to get out. We had a fire in 1995 when Toledo were evacuated to Norman Wells. Two weeks later, Norman Wells was evacuated to Yellowknife and Inuvik. And the only way we were able to get aircraft in and out was when the smoke lifted. Fire season creates smoke. Smoke is dangerous. So we could go out on the river in our little uh, fishing boats and sit on the river till the fire ends. Uh, but that's not really going to do a lot for your health if there's still smoke all around. We have to rely on airlines to be able to land on our airstrip here, which is 50, uh, just under 6,000 feet. So we can take Boeing 737s, and that's how we evacuated last time. But if a river is low on water, uh, can we even rely on that as a way to escape and get away from, from the danger of fires? I mean, this link, Stephen Baker was right. They needed a link, whether it was a road to resources, or a road just for people to be able to get out and in and out and to travel. I'm currently paying roughly uh, $2,200 for a return trip to Edmonton by air. Uh, I think around two grand for a medical trip to Yellowknife. I mean, people don't seem to realize that. I was talking to the folks from Newfoundland the other day, and they were saying how, co how costly it was to come to the FCM. That was almost four or 500 bucks a ticket. They couldn't believe what we were paying for trying to get in and out of here. Uh, we had a lot of people that were able to make a couple of Oilers hockey games and uh, at great cost to themselves, though. The cost, I mean, we talk about the cost of living in our community. The cost to get out of a community is even more absurd, <laughs> ridiculous than anything else. Uh, we're living in a place which is just impossible to relax to take care of. The only thing we got going for us are beautiful scenery, our wonderful weather, and a really good group of people in all five communities working together. So what's next? Because that's the ultimate thing, right? Because until the federal and territorial government comes to the table, until they meet with you, until they see what's going on, you're going to continue to have to advocate. What do you do next from a mayor's perspective to ensure that this doesn't just stop after this conversation, but it continues to go on. 
Well, one thing we're going to continue to do is try and let Canada know our situation. We're looking for support from wherever we can get it. And we're not sure how difficult that's going to be, but we, we're confident in our own abilities as a council to work with our residents, to work with our businesses. We're, as I said, we're going to be having some sessions with our budget very soon to see if we've got money that we can free up to keep our businesses active and making some money so they can keep their tradesmen to keep personnel around. We're also taking a good look at how we can um, help our citizens more and we can do more to the food bank if we can get more material in there. Uh, we're working with Imperial Oil and uh, all the local businesses to put funds in to our food bank. Uh, one thing I will say that not one dollar has been spent from our town budget on the food bank. Every single dollar we have spended is coming from donations from our business community, from individuals, from residents, and from people like Food Banks Canada. And we are still holding our own. Uh, we have helicopter companies that will donate an hour of uh, flying time in a helicopter, and we have people come in and bid on that. That all goes into the Food Bank. So we're trying to be very self-sufficient by doing as much as we can, working and we keep saying the business community and, and dire straits because of work and the cost to, to do business, but damn it, they keep coming to the table when we ask them to, and we need donations. They're still there for us, and our community appreciates it very much. Okay, I'm going to do a shameless plug here for the uh, the, the community of Norman Wells and the surrounding area. Um, I, I don't have the link quite yet, but... I'm going to ask the mayor and his team to send me the link so it can be in the show notes. For those in Canada who can donate, who can support, we come together in the toughest times in this country and we have a community in this country who is suffering right now. We need to come together. If we can get some money up to Norman Wells so that way they can bring in food because it is costing an arm and a leg for them. As much as we are proud to be Canadian, let's be proud to be a united Canada. So hopefully people can help out and support their uh, Norman Wells local food bank so that way they can bring in food for their community members. Um, I'm just doing that. I apologize if that's a little bit off base here, but I think in times of trouble, we always rally around communities that are struggling. And right now, Norman Wells is struggling. If you're listening to this and you're from a different community outside of Norman Wells, please make sure when you talk to your MP, when you talk to your MPP, when you talk, if the prime minister is in your area, let them know. As we have followers in Ottawa who work on Parliament Hill, make sure this message is loud and clear. We have a community that is struggling right now. And we have to make sure that we all work together. When one is behind, we're all behind. There's my little pledge. That sounds and excellent. That's really good. And if that were to happen, we would certainly share it with our other four neighboring communities. We're all in this together. If anything comes to us, it's not just for us, Norman Wells alone. It's for all of us as a region working together. And we would make sure that happens. But one, just one last thing. Uh, we did send a letter to Trudeau maybe three months ago, and his, his office is the one that came back and said, deal with Fraser. So uh, we've been trying to do that for quite some time. Uh, we just sent another letter to Trudeau, and because he's never in the country other than a day in Calgary for FCM, he's traveling all over the world, uh, we don't know when we'll ever get a response to that letter. But we're hoping that we will get at least a response of some sort in writing or verbally from our federal government. Well, I do hope you get that. Um, Mayor Pope, I want to thank you so much. Frank, it is, uh, I, I don't want to say it, it's been a wonderful discussion because it has truly been an eye-opening when we have communities like yours who are going through this, not just yours, but the surrounding area as well. So I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to sit down and do this. And I want to thank you for taking the opportunity to talk with me, to hear what our uh, woeful conditions are and uh, the, we'll reach out to the rest of Canada. Thank you for any support you may be able to offer and work with us. We don't want a freebie. We don't want a handout. We just want to work hard to go where we're trying to get and that's an affordable community. 
Thank you so much for tuning in for another great episode. And I want to take a moment to say thank you to Mayor Pope for sitting down with us and talking about this critical, critical issue. We are on a precipice of seeing a community struggle and we need to help them as much as we can. If you can, head over to the Norman Wells website and find the food bank support link. Support them as much as you possibly can because right now we are seeing people struggle and we need to help out Canadians whenever we can. And if you see the prime minister, if you see a minister, bring the community of Norman Wells up in that conversation because we want to ensure that the issues that are going on in Norman Wells don't happen in other parts of this country. We need to stop them happening today. We like Stephen Baker said in the like the mayor said in the interview. Stephen Baker said at best we need a road to our resources, and that road goes directly through Norman Wells. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube. Hit that follow button so we can ensure that we tell more stories like the one we did today with Norman Wells and Mayor Pope. Until next time, stay informed. Stay engaged. And most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.